Do you really know everything it does? I know for the longest time I thought I had a good idea, but then I discovered I very much did not, and it's quickly become my favorite addition to sim racing as a whole in 2022. Big claim. I get questions very frequently about how I'm able to get things to display on the screen in a certain way, or how to show different information than you're able to see by default. So, at the risk of stating the obvious, and in hopes there's someone else out there who hadn't already had this epiphany, I figured I'd share what I've discovered this year and how I use SimHub, how flexible and useful and easy it can be to create your own perfect, minimal HUD experience. But beware, you might not be able to live without it after. Very quickly, SimHub is a program which allows custom dashboards, displays, and integrations with various Sim hardware utilizing plugins which integrate to different Sims on the market. There's a payware version which enables some additional functionality and higher refresh dash motion, but everything I'm going to show you here today is done with the free version. It's very often used for folks with multiple screens to display gauges or displays on secondary monitors tablets. I'd seen these types of dashboards shared all over the place, but since I don't use a secondary screen or tablet, I never really looked into them. But I was looking for ways to spice up some of my videos or display information in immersive ways. I really dug into a feature SimHub calls overlays. Personally, I really don't like HUDs or on-screen displays when I don't need them. I know there's some folks out there that like their screen to look like an F-16 fighter jet, but especially when racing older cars, I really like it to be just about the car and the track and have minimal displays as possible. Overlays in SimHub make that easy. They're on-screen displays, basically a custom HUD that allow you to augment or even replace the default HUD that a Sim comes with. Overlays allow for incredible customization on what information displays, where the information displays, and how it displays. There are a lot of ways to use SimHub, and this isn't even scratching the surface, but I'll try to show you as simple as possible how you can start making and adding your own HUDs to your favorite Sims. Now, not every Sim is supported with SimHub, but almost everything made since the mid-2000s is. SimHub itself will have tutorials on how to enable it for a Sim, but for most, it just works immediately. For some, like AMS2 or R-Factor2, you get a toggle on a setting or a DLL or something in the Sim first. One big caveat though, you must be running your Sim in windowed mode or windowed borderless mode to be able to use these kind of overlays. Luckily, you don't need to build something completely from scratch. After installing SimHub, the easiest way to jump in is by downloading an overlay or a layout to get started with. Places like Race Department or the official SimHub forums are a great place to find these. Most download as a single SimHub package and then you can double click and install. The good thing and something that was completely lost on me for a while is that for many sims you can actually interchange dashboards between them. So it's not required to specifically find a dashboard for the sim you're using, especially if you're open to doing a little tweaking. SimHub uses shared parameters that we'll look at in a few minutes, which allow dashboards to largely work across sims unless they're using a specific sim setting like rest time in truck simulator. You know, something that's specific to that sim and not going to be available elsewhere. There are thousands of HUDs and dashboards out there, but a few I could recommend to get started are a nice collection from Shovas made for GTR2 specifically. This overlay set contains a lot of panels to display different elements, but generally has a really nice, clean layout that I like a lot. Some of the elements like the map may specifically only work with GTR2, but the general timing and lap overlay is the bones of what I use in a lot of sims. There's a nice pack called Simple Dash Pack by Flesky Bacon, which has different tack, RPM gauges, speed displays, etc. These are in the form of dashboards, but can easily be made into overlay elements to use, and is the beginnings of what I use to make my RBR Escort Dash that I run. There's also a lot of additional functionality that can be brought to a sim with SimHub. User Gandalf the Dwarf, man, these usernames, has made a relative timer for AMS2 that, with some customization, can work in other sims as well to show you who's ahead and behind you like the iRacing relative you might be familiar with. And lastly, one of my personal favorites, user Red T, one of our HRRC drivers, has actually made a pit board style HUD specifically for AC, but one you can definitely use in other sims. This pit board appears only when you cross the finish line and will show you your position, lap time, and gap to opponents for a short time before disappearing again. 
very much in the style of the old GPL dashboard and something that's so cool to bring to newer sims. If you want to really immerse yourself, you can turn off all the HUD and just use this to get a quick update on what's going on each lap. I absolutely love it. So when you launch SimHub, you'll see the full list of games, or at least a lot of the games and sims that let you use it alongside. Uh, and you can scroll through, there's a lot in here that's not even actually racing sims and things, but there's so many games and ways to use SimHub, it's really cool. And I think there's even some sims outside of this list uh, if you if you wanna try to get it to work with them. But, but for almost everything I play, except like the DOS games and Grand Prix Legends, unfortunately, although I've never tried, SimHub does work quite well with almost everything else. So I think one of the problems or things that's difficult with SimHub is just how many different things you can do with it. But the Dash Studio, for what we're talking about, Dash Studio is where it all happens. And within Dash Studio, you should be brought to your dashboards by default. And these are all the full dashboards, the things that you could put on other displays, uh, but you could also use them as an overlay. SimHub does come with some of these by default, but then anything that you install that has a dashboard that comes along with it, you'll see that here. These are pretty easy to use if you did want to use a dashboard, like it's an overlay, or even for a secondary screen. If you start one of them, you can choose whether or not you want it to be windowed or on a second monitor. This is how you could set up a tablet or something like that. If we run with it windowed, it's going to pop it up actually as a, a dashboard on our screen. And this will sit on top of our game, so if we wanted to, we could actually just run with this. You can size it up so that it's the right size, put it on the screen where you'd want it. And now we've got a tachometer that can probably be used in almost every sim. Now these are all a self-contained type dashboard, so everything is inside this little box that gets created, but they do let you have more complex information displayed in one box. But if you want more of the HUD style replacement, if we X out of that and jump over to overlays, this is where you can pick and choose and grab different elements and build your own HUD for a sim. So if you download and install any of the overlays we looked at, they'll appear here in the list of available overlays. And these are all the individual elements that you can use to build yourself a HUD. Up top where we have our saved overlay layouts are our different completed total HUDs. So all the different elements selected and available for us to use for a sim. All right, so I have popped up Automobilista 2 in the background here just to go through how you make an overlay because it was a bit confusing the first time I did it. To set up your custom dashboard, you'll want to make a new overlay layout. And it is easiest to do this when you're in the sim, but you don't have to. But when you click that, it's going to pop up this little box, the Overlay Layout Editor. This is where we can choose our different overlays to mix and match and combine and set them up where we want them to appear on the screen. So from this little box, if I go to add an overlay, I'll see a full list of all the different overlays that I've made. Any that I've downloaded, I think SimHub comes with a few by default, but any of the ones you downloaded like Shovas's overlays or the other ones we went through. So if I scroll down, I can find the Show GTR2. And even though we're not in GTR2, a lot of these should still work, but I can add my style lap overlay. And when you click add, it's gonna pop up on the screen in a red box, which would allow you to drag it around and place it wherever you want it to. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, I can expand it and make it bigger or smaller, but I can place it where I want on my screen and then come back here. Now I can place additional overlays or I could stick with that here, but maybe we'll put on that AMS2 relative timer as well. So I can add that as a second element and drag it in here, size it the way I want to, place it wherever I'd want it to be on the screen. So when you're done placing all your different elements, you can come back to the layout editor here and click stop edit. And then we'll want to importantly save our layout before we exit anything. So we'll call this my AMS2 testing layout. Now this layout is set up and you'll see I do have the box hide when not in race checked, which is why everything disappeared. But if I minimize this box and come back into my sim, you'll see that my overlay has now appeared on the screen and I've got a nice little relative timer and my little lap chart in the top right hand side. So if at any point I want to edit things, say I've got something overlapping or I want to get rid of something on this dashboard, if you alt tab over to your SimHub layout editor, that should pop back up and allow you to edit the layout and you'll get these red boxes again. So I could get rid of my relative timer. Maybe I want the uh, laps remaining and stuff to be down here on the right. I could stop my edit and then I could save it over the existing one or make an entirely new one and customize my dash from there. Now that I've made my dashboard, if you come back into SimHub, you'll see my AMS2 testing layout in my saved layouts. And at any time, if I wanna use that, all I have to do here is click load and it'll pull up those different elements. So if all you wanna do is download different overlays that are out there and mix and match and build your own HUDs, that's really all you have to do. 
but we can take things a step further and start customizing the dashboards and building exactly what we want. So I think this is the point in things where we go from the relatively easy tweaking and setting up your own dashboards to the slightly more complicated customization and something that's not gonna be for everybody. But I'm here to encourage you that it's not that hard to tweak stuff to your liking. And I'll try to show you how I learned anyway and how to set up my own dashboards because I found it to be fairly easy and it lets you do so much more with SimHub. Also one really important thing, if you're gonna make and tweak your own dashboards, don't distribute them without permission from whoever originally made it. Just like with everything else, if somebody made something, you're not allowed to take just bits and pieces of it without giving credit, but definitely asking permission I think is the right thing to do. So no problem in tweaking stuff for your own use, but if you wanna share it with others, please ask permission first before doing so. All right, so building and customizing your own overlay. It's not quite as scary as it sounds. And as with a lot of things, the easiest way to get into it or understand how these things work is by looking at one that already exists. So if we scroll down in our available overlays to one of the show dashes, I think this is a good one to start with at least and go to more, you'll see a few options here. You can directly edit this dashboard, but you can also duplicate it or export it. I highly recommend duplicating whatever you're gonna edit so that you don't ruin the original. But if we duplicate it here, we can give it a new name. I'll call mine SimHub Timer Demo. Then if we find that in the list and we go to more, we can click edit. So editing a dashboard is gonna bring it up in the Dash Studio. And this is where you can make changes and tweaks and see how everything is set up. On this dashboard, you'll see on the right, it's made up of a bunch of different layers of different elements. And every element that you add to your overlay is gonna be a different row here in the components. And kind of like Photoshop with layers, they're stacked in order for how they appear. So at the top is the thing that's very much in the back somewhat opposite. And as we click through, you'll see the different elements highlight, and these are all the different pieces that build up this dashboard. The Dash Studio is a very visual builder, so you can drag and drop stuff around, you can copy and paste it, you can enable a grid so that you can see how things are lining up or snap to the grid itself to make things look nice, but it's pretty intuitive to slide things around. When you do select an element like Best Lap here, on the right side are all the different settings for how that appears. So the general location of it, as well as the font that it uses, any background colors, and down here in the text section, the different fonts and sizes and things that it's gonna show up as. Admittedly, there's a lot more settings here than I typically play with, but everything that you could customize is located on the right side. In general, there's gonna be two types of things that you have on the dashboard. You're gonna have plain text, like the words here, best lap, which is just written in static. It's always gonna say that. Or if I click over on the time for best lap, you're gonna have things that are populated via properties or formulas. So obviously for best lap, we don't just wanna show a static number. We wanna dynamically populate that with the best lap that happens. So you'll see the formula box here on the right has been lit up and if we click that, we'll be brought into our formula editor. So there's two ways that you can set up what SimHub here calls computed values. You can use properties in a simplistic type notation style or you can actually use JavaScript. I think the properties are the most straightforward, easy ones to use and you can see here, it looks a little confusing but it's game data best lap time. How do I figure out what I would put here? Well where we have insert property, and I'll actually get rid of our best lap time macro here. If I click insert property, you'll get a list of all of the different properties that are available. Now, you'll see in the background, I still have AMS2 open. It's easiest if you do have a sim open, because you'll see all the values that are currently coming for those different things. But if I wanna populate my best lap here, if I search the list for best lap, or if I scroll through, we can see all the different parameters that might show up. And it looks like here, game data, best lap time, that's the one I'll want. So if we copy our name out, come back here, and inside of brackets, put our copied value, that'll return the best lap time. If you actually jump back out into SimHub itself and click on available properties, you can see that full list that exists. And if you're really getting into this, I recommend scrolling through and taking a look at what's available for any given sim, because there's a lot of stuff here that you might want to incorporate into your different dashboards. But if all you're trying to do is display some of these different values, which for me is mostly what I'm doing with a dashboard, if you find the name of the parameter, in the dash editor, you can populate it as a computed value inside of brackets, and that'll be what shows up on your dash. At the bottom, you do need to pick your results format, so depending on what type of data it is, this one is uh, time, so we've got minutes and seconds and tenths and hundredths and stuff, and it'll show you an example of your result and your formatted results. So with that, this dashboard would populate, but it really is that simple, just populating 
different values onto the dash. The rest of it applies with your different fonts and font sizes and just general display of everything. Now you can get way more complicated with this and you will see some of the dashes that you download online are gonna have quite complicated functions. I'll show you this one here for current lap. If we click on our little F, it's not just returning a simple lap time. What we actually have here is some JavaScript code, which is doing some different displays depending on what's happening. So by checking the use JavaScript box, you have access to write. With JavaScript, you can reference these different parameters using the prop variable. But this one's basically saying if the car is in the pit, then return nothing. Otherwise, you know, if the lap is valid, then return nothing. But lastly, if it's not either of those things, we want to return the current lap time. So it's just accounting for some of those different instances where you maybe don't want to display some really long lap because you've been sitting in the pits for 20 minutes. Obviously it takes a degree of understanding programming and things like that to write this, but not too hard to understand if you're reading it. And this is where having other dashboards as reference can come in handy. And something that you can do, and again, just for yourself, please don't share stuff like this, but if I just wanted a couple elements from this dashboard, you can actually copy and paste between dashes. So if I want my lap value, which is something that's already been figured out how to populate, copy that out, I can have a new dash that I have set up and paste that in, tweak my different sizes and displays and everything to get it to show up like I want it to. But using that, you can combine elements from different dashes and get something that displays exactly what you want. At any point when you're done working on a dash, if you save it, that'll save that overlay. And if you already have that overlay selected in one of your saved overlays, it's instantly gonna use the newest version of it. So using that type of approach to copy and change elements is how you can really get quite far in customizing building your own dashboard. Like with many things, it's how much time you're willing to spend on it is really how far you can go. And it's really incredible what some folks have devised using some of these simple formulas and things. So whether you're going to embark on creating your own crazy dashboards or you're going to download some of the ones I mentioned in this video and just display some new information in new ways. I hope this was an interesting look at SimHub and maybe something different than you see normally when talking about it. If you have secondary screens and tablets and I've actually been looking at maybe getting one because it seems like an awesome way to show more things, but even for something that's relatively simple like this, just displaying information in a nice, clean, simple way on the screen might not be that important for some out there, but for those that it is, can create such a different experience and an immersive one in racing some of these sims. So hopefully that's enough info to get you dangerous with this and start creating some really cool dashes. I'm sure there's some dashboards out there that I don't know about, so if there's anything that's really cool that you think I or other folks would like, definitely send a comment here so that we can all know about it. I hope all of your displays now are beautiful, but for now, I think that's it from the display department. So thank you for watching. This is GP Labs, and I'll see you all again next time.